here, so why don't we kick off the stream? <clears throat> Hello and welcome to our Update 32 live stream preview here on twitch.tv slash DDO stream and youtube.com slash Dungeons and Dragons slash live. I'm DDO's community manager, Cordovan, and I'm here this week with no worries and no Bob. And I actually have the text flipped around. Maybe I'll take care of that real quick. So, uh, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit, no Bob, and let us know what it is you do. Uh, hi, uh, my name is no Bob, or at least on the forums. And uh, I'm primarily a content designer here. Uh, this uh, latest pack. I worked on the Secret of Slaver Stockade. Uh, it's this fine, fine, old, old module. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was really neat. Uh, it's fun to get a chance to go back to classic modules, take a look, and uh, put a nice little spin on the DDO version of them. Yeah, we'll so be talking about against the Slave Lords. We'll be talking about Kameth Crafting. We'll have plenty of time for your Q&A. We're going to be doing this uh, for about 45 minutes or so. We'll kind of see how long it goes. Depends how active our chat is and all the rest, so feel free to ask us a question. If we can answer, we will. If we can't, I'll well, just tell you we can't answer it. That is the way things go sometimes. Also with me is No Worries, and the reason you are behind the mic is you've been pretty active here in Update 32. You've got your to-do list for Update 32 was quite the list. Uh, yeah, the main things were Kenneth Crafting and the Named Loot, which also included a mini crafting system for the Slave War Dungeons. So, yeah, basically all the system stuff was me this update. Yeah. And we will be uh, probably taking a look at the loot here a little bit later on. The general course of events is we're going to start with a quick look at Kenneth Crafting, then we will go into uh, the update 32 quests against the Slave Lords. Again, like I say, spoiler light. We're going to stick to probably the first third of the three dungeons at most here. We're really just going to give you a bit of a, a taste for what to expect, and then you'll be seeing the content itself September 13th. That is our release date here for Update 32 against the Slave Lords. Again, check us out on ddo.com. We're going to have a whole bunch more information out there right now. You can check out our Kenneth Crafting Guide or Update 32 Named Item Guide and uh, enjoy the conversation on the forums and social media. Okay, let us kick over into the game here and we're going to take a look at Kenneth Crafting. So there are, for those who have not used Kenneth Crafting until this point, we, there are Kenneth Crafting Halls of House Kundarg, House uh, Kenneth. This is over on the Eberron side. And there is also a Guild Airship Amenity that you can use to open up your crafting halls. You can also get some things in the DDO store that we could talk about a little bit later if you want to. Uh, so, uh, no worries. Kenneth Crafting has been a system in place for quite a long time. And you were tasked for Update 32 here to reconcile it with the new updated random loot system and make the system current for 2016. So how did you go about, I mean, give us a little bit of a look at your thought process. How, how did you actually figure out what to do? Yeah, so it was important to keep Kenneth Crafting feeling like it was Kenneth Crafting, even though a lot of the methods were going to change, a lot of the effects were going to change behind the scenes and the process. So we had to look at what the general process of was Kenneth Crafting and how much of that we could keep. So you still deconstruct uh, random loot items for essences, but now instead of there being 24 essences, 12 greater and 12 lesser, there's just a Kenneth essence. So we simplified that down. <clears throat> and previously there were three schools with the different effects kind of just spread throughout them and some of it didn't line up. So we just merged that down into one school. So you have the one essence, the one school, but you still deconstruct for essences, you still disjunct loot to blank it out so that you can start crafting on it, and you use the essences and collectibles to create the different shards that you want to build the items that you want. All right, so at its core, you're going to take the random gem loot that you get in the game, and then you're going to put it in one of these item deconstruction devices. You can do one of two things. You can disjunct it to make it craftable, or you can deconstruct it to pull Kaneth essences from these items, which you will then use to make shards that will level yourself up in Kaneth Crafting. Yes, that's correct. And once you do deconstruct the item, the basic process of creating a shard is you craft a minimum level shard, and then you craft whatever effects you want to put on it, and the minimum level shard will determine the power of the effects you put on it. Yeah, so now, whereas before you might have strength one through, you know, 
10 or whatever for shards. Now you just have a strength shard. So when you're creating a min level 12 item, you put min level 12 shard on there, just put a strength shard on, and the power of strength is automatically set for that level of item. So you no longer have to create all those different ones and figure all that out. You just put on the effects that you want on the level you want, and it's all taken care of. Correct, correct. And uh, so the, what if you are already in Kenneth Crafting? If you're not, say, brand new to the system, but you've been using the old Kenneth Crafting system for a couple of years, what is some of the key information you think we should know? Well, first off, you should know that all your Kenneth uh, Crafting experience from before carries over. It's all from the three schools is added together and put into the single new school so you don't lose any of the progress you've done before. Now you can make minimum level items up to what would be power level 34. Uh, we refer to it that way because we only go up to minimum level 30 obviously since that's players but the power continues up from there. So whereas in random week you could go up to uh, what would be power level 40 with Kenneth you can go up to 34. And you'll come away at around level 260 in crafting if you were maxed out in the old system and in the new system it now goes up to level 400 so you still have a little progress to do but you can create all the levels you could before when you come over and almost all the effects are there there's some standalone effects that don't scale and we just added scaling alacrity which wasn't in random loot yet so we have that new we have scaling striding so i think you'll see most of the stuff there just in an easier format so uh, lower level items have prefixes and suffixes just like regular random gen. Once you get above level 10, you get into things like you can craft some extra slots onto your item. And there's kind of a whole bunch of uh, special case scenarios with Kadeth Crafting and special things you can do. Uh, we do have a guide out there, but I guess in general, as you get higher into Kadeth Crafting, what are some of the benefits to uh, you do, at starting at bin level 10 on items, get the extra slot which you use a Mark of House Canvas to put on there, which used to be the Masterful Craftsmanship shard, now it gives you the extra slot. Uh, as you get higher in skill, you can start creating unbound uh, minimum level shards and effect shards. And I think it's also worth noting that all your bound items are now bound to accounts that are bound to character, so you don't need to try to level up a whole bunch of crafters, you can just have your one crafting character. and create items for all of your different characters. As people are seeing in the chat room here too, there's something else that's new with Kadeth Crafting that's coming in Update 32, and that is the use of collectibles uh, in the system and really a rejuvenation of collectibles in the game. Yeah, the old system used collectibles very sparingly for a couple of very specific effects. We realized that a lot of collectibles weren't used very much. Uh, a lot of the items that you could gain from them were outdated. They were just, a lot of people avoided collecting them. And so we came up with a solution to use those as part of the crafting materials for the effect shards specifically. The minimum level shards just take essences, but for the different effect shards. And with that, we added new higher level ones, and we also made it so collectibles start falling in non-Eberron content as well. So you're not limited to just the Eberron content to get your collectibles. Okay. And uh, I don't know. It's a pretty good overview there. Uh, you know, there's a, it's a little complex, I think, today to get into some of the what all can you put on things because it gets yeah. a little complex. Um, but like I say, we do have a guide there and it really mirrors random gen loot. Yes, it does. So all the rules that apply to random gen loot in terms of what goes where and that kind of thing, if you know that system, you don't care. Yeah, for the most part. There's a couple effects like Vorpal that were left just in random loot, whereas uh, Kenneth got a couple of its own exclusive effects, but over 90% of it is all matching what you can do with random loot. So you can basically make that random loot item that you've been struggling to find directly through Kenneth Craft. Great, great. All right. Um, that should pretty well take care of it then, unless, you know, there are some things like... Uh, I guess when we talk a little bit about chance of success, so when you are crafting a shard and crafting sort of things, there are various operations that have a random chance of success, so how does that work? Uh, the, the chance of success depends on your skill versus the uh, skill check of the shard you're making. If you match up with the skill, then you have a 100% chance of crafting it. If you're 15 levels below it, then you have a 50%, and then at 30%, you can no longer try to craft it. You can try down to 1%. And 
And so it scales uh, evenly down through those ranks, and there are potions you can get to boost your chance of success and those types of things, which you can get in-game or I believe you can get in the store as well. But And as every two times you craft a recipe successfully, it behind the scenes it lowers the level of that recipe by one, making it easier to craft again. Okay. All right. I think that should pretty well do it. So why don't we turn our attention to the new quest pack, which is against the slave lords, and that's uh, what you're here uh, to talk about somewhat, no Bob. So against the slave lords, classic first edition module A1, A2, A3, yep. even A4. Uh, it's A1 through A3. Uh, we yeah. decided not to do uh, A4 because of uh, some of the difficulties at the start of that dungeon. That uh, dungeon is one in which if any of the other dungeons had gone poorly, you uh, started without anything and had to escape. So didn't really uh, work within the, the sort of set of modules, so we went with A1 through A3. Right, and uh, that is Slave Pits, uh, call it the name so I get that. Uh, slave Pits of the Undercity, Secret of the Slaver's Stockade, and Assault on the Airy of the Slave Lords. What's an Airy? Um, honestly, I don't particularly know. I wasn't working on that dungeon, and it wasn't important. Uh, it, it, I, habitat. I, it's yes. a fancy word for habitat. That's where, where they don't sleep. Fair, All right, so uh, these quests are level 8 on Heroic. Yep. Uh, 8, 9, 10 for normal hard and elite. Not legendary, mm -hmm. they're 31, 32, and 33. So we have something both for lower level characters. This does thematically move from Temple of Elemental Evil into Against the Slave Lords. As a matter of fact, I believe there's a pen and paper tie that as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And it's one of the ideas that we had is that we thought it was a good transition from players to go from one classic pack to the next one um, and continue sort of their progression through it. So how would you describe the Slave Lords series? Um, the Slave Lords series, the way that I would describe it is it has a lot of that old classic first edition, you How'd know, you stuff. It uh, has a whole bunch of different interesting traps and a whole bunch of different uh, encounters, which, uh, which sort of set it aside and sort of set the time period in which it was written. Um, uh, those are some of the things that I find are pretty indicative of it, uh, things such as uh, if you're to run into a bear in my dungeon, if, or perhaps a rope in the third dungeon. Each of those dungeons kind of have those thematic moments where you interact with things, which sort of harkens back to the earlier days of uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Nice. Uh, someone said, do we have to abandon Temple to get inside? No, no. There's no, no prereq or anything like that. You can go straight into uh, both Temple of Element to leave the land against the Slave Lords just right off the bat. All right, so we're basically investigating slaver activity in the area. Yes. And there, you know, people are disappearing, villagers need help. You're there to see a real kind of classic premise stuff here. Yes. So what can I, you know, like I say, without getting too spoilery, what kinds of things can people expect to be fighting and seeing and doing in these questions? Well, um, while they're going through it, they're going to be in, uh, interacting with a sort of a wide array of different types of uh, creatures which have allied themselves with the slave lords. Uh, things, a lot of different humanoids, anything from uh, specific uh, humans, which are, which are mercenaries working for them, uh, things like hobgoblins, uh, kobolds, things of that sort, uh, and then a couple of uh, individual characters, things such as Minotaurs or one-off creatures as they go through. I expect you to destroy them, all of them. So I uh, wanted to pause just a little bit to hear that voice work. Our voice work here for against the slave lords is Travis Willingham. That's yep. one of the special things that we were able to bring to you with against the slave lords here. He is known particularly currently for his work on Critical Role, which is a podcast where people play uh, Dungeons and Dragons. And the paper games, that kind of thing. And, but he is a, I mean, he is a voice actor such an incredibly extensive history. That's IMDb, it was like 270 strong. So, I mean, it's just between games and movies and cartoons and, and everything, he's, he's just been a very, very active uh, 
person. And uh, so it's cool to be able to see this. Absolutely, and he was great to work with. And yeah. uh, the the quality of the different uh, things that he, uh, the voiceover work and the DM work that he did for us was great. Uh, it's fantastic to get him have the opportunity to have them work with us for this pack um, and hopefully maybe in the future we'll get a chance to uh, have him do some additional narration. Um, it's a really kind of great process and I think it's pretty important for uh, these classic packs for bringing sort of iconic people in the D&D &D space and bringing them into it and sort of making them a part of the DDO family. Yeah. So as a developer how challenging is it to tackle sort of a classic pack like this? Um, it's super challenging. Um, I mean, given the depth and the length of the variable uh, nature of the modules themselves, like if you take my module, the uh, A2 uh, module, um, currently the form that it is taken is probably about, I'd say close to about half to two-thirds of the content that's actually involved in the module itself. Uh, there were a couple of sections that ended up due to time constraints and things of that sort, and also so that it wasn't a four-hour module or uh, adventure, uh, were kind of left off. And so essentially what you need to do is look through and make determinations on, okay, what is an iconic part of this uh, adventure? What's an iconic, like, what are the moments that are really important to sort of set it aside from uh, other different types of content, and how to evoke the feeling of those uh, of, of that content? I'm dying here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so I, I should say, mention, clearly I'm not dying here. So we're using an interim development plan, and I'm on basically an admin character. So I not only can't die, but I'm doing this on purpose, not only because I, I want you to experience sort of the challenge of so I'm just sort of doing this in, in God mode, but then also so I can push a button and kill everything around me so that I can not have to sit here and fight everything for you guys and just sort of show off a little bit. Yeah, the, uh, the the smite button is one of my favorite things as we're sort of running through and testing. Really kind of a handy little tool to have while we're, uh, you know. So if you're sitting there, go, oh, I, and we actually just ran into a trap. So one thing I know is in the Slaver series is we've got some pretty devious traps going. Uh, absolutely, and there's a really good uh, mix of them. One of the systems that we sort of reused for par portions of it is sort of a randomized trap system that we uh, use specifically in Temple of Elemental Evil, and then there are a whole bunch of indi very specifically crafted traps for the uh, for these modules, and these are traps that we, uh, depending on the different module for, say, mine, um, there were three different really iconic traps that I thought were really important to capture in the course of gameplay, and so there they go. And so we took the time and energy to make sure that they were an integral part of the, uh, the adventure. All right. Um, this will be available in the DDO store for purchase, uh, free to VIPs, as, as usual. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure what other questions we can answer here. I think we'll just kind of show off a little bit of a fight and go quiet for just a little bit and uh, just play a little bit of the quest. We'll do a few minutes here for you. Nice. Um. This room stinks of vinegar, fire, and rot. The odor pours from a large mound of smoldering compost in the center of the floor. I wanted to call attention real quick to this kind of iconic logo that you may be familiar with. Um, this is actually used in the compilation, got a version of the module in pen and paper. We were able to sort of replicate it using our own artists and that in the game. You'll see it really against the Slave Lord's kind of logo as well, but uh, I wanted to point that out because it's, it's kind of an iconic part of the classic adventure. Uh, once again, our artists did a really good job, or an amazing job of kind of bringing iconic objects or things which are evocative of a series and, and bringing them forward. So, it, uh, our artist, uh, for one of our artists, you know, have worked a lot on this, and she did a really, really great job. 
All right, I'm going to now move into the second quest. This is Secret of the Slaver's Stockade. Um, yep. This one you did not work on. This this is. Come on, this yep. is the one that I worked on. Oh, this uh, one you worked on? Yeah, this. Oh. Is, this the second one's the one that I worked on. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, while we were going through it, uh, one of the things that was mentioned, uh, we went through a round of Lamania feedback, and we ended up. Uh, uh, shortening the dungeon a little bit. Uh, the runtime was a little bit longer than a bunch of the other uh, portions, but uh, I'm I'm super proud of this. I'm glad that I got a chance to work on it. I mean, it's really great. Uh, you know, I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons since I was super young, and I've actually played through a bunch of these old old modules, and so it's kind of a great form of wish fulfillment that I get a chance to work and bring these to life so that other people can see them in a different medium. Like, it's it's sort of an unreal that, it's unreal that that's a part of my job and what I get a chance to do. Yeah. And uh, the other folks who got to work on these quests, for those who are keeping track of these, some DDO fans would like to look at that. Uh, knock the back in one of the dungeons and, and uh, where the slavers meet before going out on raids. Oh, Kintani. 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 Yeah. Uh, did the other one. Yes. Um, he, uh, Kitani did the first one, and uh, and Knockback did the, the third. Um, one of the things that uh, the setup for this module is that you're essentially entering into a fort. Uh, this specific fort was thought to be abandoned, and it turns out that it has become a hub and a a a base for the slave the slavers in this particular area. Um, and uh, so you go through and you're going after a particular slave lord named Marques. I can't show this. Come on up here. What? That's, that's the thing, right? No, no, no. Okay. That's fine. The, oh, okay. you, you could go on up. The, this I is... just don't want to give away that one scene. Oh, no, no, no. no. Uh, essentially, these are the outer towers. And so you haven't gotten into the, uh, the inner fortress. And that's when some of those more iconic moments start to happen. Okay. So, uh, you should be uh, fine if you take a left here. Come on out. But yeah. Um, and it's one of those things that's really great. Getting, uh, like, one of the challenges or one of the interesting parts of this type of uh, thing is that you actually have a map. And this map... Um, one sec. I can see if I can show it. Uh, oh yeah, let me uh, put on the camera here so you can uh, put it on the screen. Let's see if... Uh, this will be readable at all. Uh, so uh, when you're working with this stuff, uh, this is the map. And so what we want to do is take a version of this and try to reliably, you know, bring up most of this to life. And that's essentially what my blueprint for the entire module was. So it was exciting. And that's map one. And sorry. So and this is map two. This is the inside portion. So knowing a little bit about what I know about DDO, putting a map like that and directly translating it into the game has got to have some challenges to it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the things is that our world building tools versus what they used essentially uh, a form of graph paper and sort of uh, the way you build dungeons is much different compared to anything that they were able to do or just kind of sketch their ideas down on a piece of paper. Um, the time and energy it takes to build one of these dungeons is... its uh, it, it takes a good, decent amount of time to make sure that uh, it... it... Uh, it comes to life. Uh, for this case, someone asked ha, ha, me, uh, spent many hours in that map? Yes, I, I spent many, many hours laying out this dungeon. I, I, the people which worked out at it... Um, Oh, can uh, they're asking to see the in-game map? If you have a oh, I do, but it's not very well explored. Actually, okay. I popped out of the dungeon here, so I'll have to show you that. Okay, um, you'll have to discover that, I guess, for yourself. I, yeah. I didn't. I'd have to go through the uh, bus um, to but the it's map, right? it's a rough approximation. There are a few yeah. changes that were made. Um, some of it for the sake of gameplay. Uh, the dungeon was running probably about five or ten minutes longer than we normally would like dungeons in this specific case to run. Um, and so we put, we moved one or two of the different bits. Um, this is the third dungeon. This is the, uh, what is it? It's the assault of the, uh, of the Eerie of the Slave Lords. Um, this is what Knockback worked on, and uh, he put together some really, really fun and evocative moments uh, from 
from way back when. Uh, there's a rope in this dungeon, which is my favorite part of the dungeon. Which one? The rope oh. or, or the cube. Those are my two favorite moments. Yeah, there, but, there's some great stuff in here. Um, you know, for those who have done the pen and paper module, you always have to figure out where and when you need to compromise. But at the same time, you have to be pretty faithful to this stuff as well. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a part of our sort of responsibility of making sure that the gameplay is updated with what is interesting to DDO players and what's and also being very uh, faithful to the original source material, or at least as faithful as we can be. Um, we really try to go out of our way to get an understanding and you know read through the different modules and make sure that kind of a number of the different iconic portions come to uh, come to life. The floor here is covered with coarse white granules. And you're in the salt. Naturally occurring salt crystals from the cave walls. <laughs> you stumble and slide down the slope of corridor. Why the salt? The part of, uh, no. It's like grease and salt. Yeah, it's all salt. I, and that's one of those things is while you're kind of looking through these different modules, uh, for me, I had, a, I had a couple of different portions, and some of it was like I read this, and I'm like, how do I bring this object to life? Uh, part of the problem is some of it's spoilery, but like they have things which, you know, uh, so as a part of the module, there's there was a magnet trap in the pen and paper thing, and it does something that I can't do, and nor would I ever want to do in DDO. Uh, what it does is it takes every single metallic object that a player owns and sticks it to a wall irretrievably. <laughs> I think the players might not like that particular object uh, or obstacle. Love it when their DM gets rid of all their stuff. Right? Yeah, and so you know the, that's the type of thing where I can be like. So there's a magnet, I want to do something with this magnet and this magnetic pole mechanic, but I can't do what was specifically in the module itself. We get all that salt, by the way, from the heroic so. yeah. I, I thought we got all that salt from the forums, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Alright, so hey, this chest is a great time to actually transition into loot. For update 32 here. So, what the heck is a legendary staff splinter, and why would I want it? That is one of the ingredients you collect to upgrade. Uh, there's an item from each dungeon that you can craft up to four effects on. And the interesting thing about each of these items is they can go in two equipment slots. So we haven't really done that before and so that actually although there's three items gives you six slots you can fill with fully customizable crafted name blue and so you have to collect the different ingredients from the different dungeons to create the different effects that you want to put on that loot and that happens to be one of those items so where do you actually get this done uh i believe at part beginning of part one okay. there is these crafting stations to do this with Okay, and so you'll just be picking up staff splinters and that sort of thing, and, yep. and crafting it in some ways a little bit similar to can of crafting, but it really is its own crafting. Yes, system. it's fully separate, standalone. Everything comes from within the dungeon, including the items that you craft on, and we're just you're always trying to come up with new interesting things for the players to do that they haven't seen before, and so we thought flexible items could be an interesting attempt at that. So this one, for example, will go on a wrist slot or boots, you know, your feet yep. slot. How, if you just sort of click on it on your hotbar, it goes to the first one, right? Yes, each one has a default slot that it will go to automatically, the same way that rings always go into just the finger one slot. Yep. And these also have a set bonus, well, there are two different types of set bonus, one for wearing three pieces, one for wearing five pieces. It's yes. a little bit stronger. And you can put those in any of the slots. Like, for example, if I had two legendary shackles, I could, that would count for yep. two of the set? Okay. They each count independently, so you can fill up uh, six slots with all your different effects bonuses there. Great, great. And what other slots do we have? Do you have? Uh, we have fingers and uh, trinket, and <laughs> what are the other two? Yes. <laughs> you see right there, that is some classic <laughs> wonderful d and like. <laughs> That's some old school AD and D. You open a door and there's a wall with a note in it. And on that note, I think we are going to actually cut it. I don't want to spoil, you know. I mean, I know 
spoiling is uh, something that on our previous streams in particular we want to be real sensitive about. So uh, there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of that kind of thing and, and classic module stuff in there. So let me uh, go back through the chat, go all the way up to the top here, and see what kind of questions we might be able to answer. Let's kind of transition over into our Q and A section, and we can also talk about name pollute and all that uh, in just a little bit if we want to. Well, let's get some questions here. The King Corrin says Travis William has a great voice for DMA. Hope he does more modules in the future. Uh, I believe he may be making a comeback for our night as well. I think we can have some work. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. So, we'll see. Uh, how about that slave master's staff? Why does it not help cold spellcasters? Why do that's you hate just, cold spellcasters? That's just not memories? what the theme of that staff was. It was those three elements. Uh, it is a three-pronged staff. Each of the prongs is focused on a different element, and those were just the elements that worked for that whole theme. Okay. Sorry, cold casters. Sorry. Is the crafting altar for slavers in the dungeons itself? Yes, uh, yeah. it should be in the first one. Uh, it's not in the Hall of Heroes. The Hall of Heroes is where you pick, on the Eberron side, is where you pick up the quests and mm -hmm. run the quests. So any way you can get into the Hall of Heroes will be where you find the NPCs for against the slave ones. All right, and there's another vote for cold on that staff. How many ingredients does it cost to craft something? Uh, a lot. Uh, I don't remember. I think it's... Uh, I think it's it like depends on the four hundred level four. of the shard and various things. Oh, like for that. for Kenneth. Yeah, I yeah, think that's what it means. yeah. It's it's a scale that goes up as e all the effect shards are broken up into different uh, tiers, and each tier has its own uh, crafting requirements. And just to answer for the quest chain then as well, I can't remember the exact numbers, but it, it's going right. to take a couple of runs. Yeah, it'll take a it'll take a handful of runs for sure to start getting those effects on the items. Uh, Thimble says, it's nice that these craftable, upgradable items and slavers are bound to account. I assume it remains bound to account throughout the crafting process, question mark? Yes. Will we be able to craft orbs in the new can of crafting? We do not have craftable orbs yet, nor do they drop in random loot, but I will say it is something that has been discussed, but there are no plans currently. Do we even have any other insightful stats that go up to plus eight? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have an encyclopedia in my head of all those, so I'm not sure, actually. So but a uh, they, can, they can come out of random loot up to that high, I believe, if you get yeah, lucky at the so. top end. Uh, someone uh, says that they would... Oh, early on we had looked at the possibility of adding clickables, like some right. of the, the old clickies and adding them to King of Crafting, but we didn't ultimately go with that. No, I mean, Kenneth is just a huge system, so we ended up pulling that off of the initial design just so we could get everything in place and have everything working, but fortunately Kenneth is set up in a way that we can make changes and additions to it a lot easier than we could in the past, so it is always possible we could go back and add more things to it. Yeah. Uh, is there any favor update coming? This one's earlier in chat from SBC Dragon 13. Um, this will award Gatekeeper favor, like our similar ones. Uh, we do need to go back through and actually take a look at some favor reward tiers for looking at you PDK favor, that kind of thing. But we don't have any immediate plans to do that that I'm aware of. Unless you guys. No, but uh, favor does, as a whole, give rewards above 5,000 now. So that was a change that we made. Uh, correct, correct. Uh, we already answered, which comes Uh, Erlock asks, does a true reincarnation and iconic reincarnation reset recipe ransack? Okay, yeah, this is a question. So, under the current system, when you true reincarnate, your Kanith Crafting XP, which decrements every time you make a shard, um, ends up getting basically a ransack ability. Is anything like that in the new Kanith Crafting system? Yeah, although it's been changed from every craft to every two times you craft an item, and it still does go away when you uh, reincarnate. Okay. Is that noise a fan? Yes. We have some kind of air conditioning thing going on here. Perhaps we'll have to deal with that later. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Are the dungeons locked? I.e., do you have to run one, then two, then three? The first time through, that is yes. correct. Yeah. 
And there is a Quest Arc NPC in the Hall of Heroes who will direct you to the proper one to go. Absolutely. Any other questions you guys want to ask before we, I guess, start to wind down this stream a little bit? Uh, before we do that, I did want to call out some of the new named items, uh, see if we had any questions about that as well. This is our, from our new named item guide, and uh, No Worries is the main person who put all this stuff together. I should also point out that we have really nice new armor set, two nice new uh, helms, all that's actually two new armor sets for all new art which are really great that's one of them right there which you call the executioner set and then there's a slave armor set which is this pretty plate. nice yeah plate. And then that's so that's oh we also i guess that it's kind of funny you know in, in our uh active community right uh one of the more exciting parts of the update is what you're seeing here we finally have bare chested people yeah in uh, ddo after it only took 10 years but we could finally have like a gladiator style outfit with yep. these sleep rags both for men and women of course so slightly more modest for the other ladies so and uh sense. noah went through and did a lot of work on the bare chested textures to make sure it would all work so it's all new and it's i think it looks really great in the game yep, yep. Uh, the artists continue to just, and specifically Noah worked on a bunch of stuff, um, continue just to do amazing work for us. All the stuff that we see, we get, we're so lucky to have all of the support we do. For the art guide, there is a new order in Update 32 in the main today, so something to keep in mind. All right, let me uh, turn back to our chat room here and then also head on over to YouTube chat and see what kind of uh, question questions we get. So I've seen it asked a couple times. Mass deconstruction is not in game yet, and it's not going live with this update. But we haven't given up looking at it yet. It's just happens to be a big undertaking to make a system like that work. So, still looking at it. Okay. Why is the cost of collectibles the same for all levels? Because uh, they are. The collectibles come in level ranges. Yeah. So each time you go up to another tier using a different tier of collectibles, just the same amount from a different tier. So every five levels is a different tier of collectibles now in the game, yeah. which scales automatically. So as you go in the quest, they should just start seeing the different ones. And if you want to actually see that list, it is in the updated Kenneth Crafting Guide as well. We talk a little bit about where you can find the various things. So as you're looking, you should be able to do that. Uh, SPC Dragon says, when will we see Update 32? September 13th is our release date for Update 32 here. Can't Something wait. changes, we'll let you know, but that's looking pretty solid, I think. So. Um, question about the bare chested color matching skin color? Yeah, it should. Like if you're a yeah. PDK. Or yep, should match. Uh, half arc. What is the bonus this weekend? I need to look, sorry. Um, I guess that should... About new collectibles, where will they be? Where will uh, the new collectibles be? They will be in the higher level dungeons. We've added them to some old quests to make sure that they're around, and they should be in the new quests on the legendary tiers as well. What about bringing some of those new collectibles to the old formal collectible system? Any sort of NPC trade ins in the works? We don't have any in the works now. I mean, it's certainly something we could look at, but I think if we did that, we'd have to look at the system as a whole because most of the existing turn-ins just aren't worth it at this time so we'd have to really go over all those rewards and see what needed to be done there yeah uh all vixerin says what about ddo bonus days connected with kenneth crafting yeah we've got them uh we'll have to kind of check to see the status of that and see what what we can do there but you know they kind of got deprecated just because kenneth crafting itself wasn't um you know, just over time, it, it became less less uh, desirable among the community. So we kind of got rid of the bonus, but we can bring it back. We'll have to take a look, see what we can do. We have, I believe, some XP uh, bonuses for Kenneth Crafting we can turn on, perhaps in the future. Yeah, I believe that all still works with the new system. And then finally, what about the old essences? Uh, you will want to deconstruct your shards now. Uh, otherwise, if you have old Kenneth Crafting essences, like the lesser and greaters, you can convert those when update 32 arrives 
By speaking to the NPCs, uh, one of the you know, trader NPC at either of the Kenneth Crafting stations, and uh, yeah, but the shards you want to deconstruct yeah. or use. All right, that's going to do it with the Update 32 live stream preview here on twitch.tv slash ddostream and youtube.com slash Dungeons and Dragons slash live. Thank you very much, No Bob. Thank you very much, No Worries, mm, for joining you. us here this afternoon for Update 32. We hope you guys are looking forward to the update. We will see you on September 13th for Update 32 Against the Slave Lords with guest DM Travis Willingham. Thank you very much for playing DDO. Thank you very much for being a part of the community. And we'll see you again soon. Take care, guys.